This is what happens when you're live in the streets. <laughs> Hi, I'm Beryl, and the channel today is heading on another field trip. We are all going to Mexico. Welcome to Mexico City, home to around 9.2 million people. It was founded in 1325 as the capital of the Aztec Empire. Mexican food is one of the world's oldest cuisines, and there are a lot of ingredients endemic to the country. One of them, the one we are here to talk about, is called wheat la coche. So let's talk about wheat la coche. It dates back to the Aztecs. It's actually a naturally occurring corn fungus. In the US, it goes by the name corn smut. Terrible name, I hate it. While it is technically a plant disease, it is a prized delicacy. A typical cob of corn in Mexico costs under $1, but a cob of wheat la coche costs around $2.50. Wheat la coche was used by the Aztecs in tamales and in stews, but today, the most common way to have it is in a quesadilla. And that is what we are here for. I asked one of my friends, Joey, who is a filmmaker in Mexico City, if he could help with this piece, and he agreed. Okay, I think everything's in order. Hi, my name is Joey Munoz. I'm a filmmaker here in Mexico City. I'm originally from Tijuana, Mexico. And today I'm gonna help Beryl shoot this story on huitlacoche. It's an ingredient that for how uh, unknown it is amongst like foreigners, it's very common here. You can find it on literally any corner. Any lady selling quesadillas will have huitlacoche. But if you want good wheat la coche, you have to hit one of those stands that's like right next to the market because that's that's how you know it's going to be really fresh. Mi nombre es Azar Flores Fernández. Vendemos quesadillas, lacoyos, gorditas de chicharrón y sopes. El puesto lleva 55 años. Era de mi suegra y pues nos los dejó. Llevo 25 años trabajando en el puesto. El huitlacoche es un hongo de maíz, es color negro y muy sabroso. Es suave y pues su sabor es medio, a veces medio acidito, pero muy poquito. El proceso es que se, se pica, bien picadito, con cebolla, ajo y se pone a sazonar. Se le pone pasote picado. Eh, yo pienso que las tres cosas debe llevar para que agarre un sazón bueno. Eh, lo preparo en quesadillas. Eh, una quesadilla es una tortilla que preparamos. Le ponemos en medio el guisado, la doblamos, se le pone salsa. I'm just gonna jump in really quickly because we need to address the elephant that just got brought into the room. Yes, in Mexico City, when you get a quesadilla, it does not come with cheese. It's crazy, Joey, back me up. <laughs> I could talk about the quesadilla debacle all day. <laughs> it is, it's, in the, it's in the name, quesa, queso, quesadilla. There's a disagreement amongst the Mexican people on what a quesadilla is, believe it or not. Uh, the people from Mexico City think quesadillas don't need queso or cheese, but the rest of the country, a quesadilla, immediately you think of uh, tortilla with cheese and maybe something else. Here in Mexico City, quesadilla basically means just a tortilla with something in the middle. And that's how you find wheat la coche most commonly. It's kind of like a, a wheat la coche taco. So whenever I ask for a quesadilla, um, if I forget to say con queso, then it won't have cheese in it. And you know, I'll be pretty upset because <laughs> I, I like my quesadillas with cheese like everybody else in the country. Make sure to order your quesadilla con queso with cheese. The more you know, right? Okay, let's get back to the story. Es sin mi sazón, tiene un secreto y es un secreto de familia y, y no se lo decimos a nadie. Estoy desde las 7 a las 5 y media. Mi mamá me enseñó desde muy pequeña. Me gusta mucho cocinar y las cosas las hago pues con cariño más que nada. Vienen muchos extranjeros, pues me piden de hongos, de flor de calabaza, pero cuando prueban el huitlacoche, eh, sí les gusta mucho. Son cosas nuevas para ellos. Sí. Ah, claro que sí, son bienvenidos. Cuando gusten, aquí estamos. Ok, so, we are going to try this. Oh. I'm in Mexico City. ¿Cuántos pesas, no? 20. 
Which salsa should I get? Green. <laughs> this bag is not my vibe. Ugh. Okay, so I'm actually trying it here, which is kind of cool. Wheat Lacoche, blue corn with the green salsa because you have to have the green salsa. It's spicy and it's so good. It's got like, like a really earthy taste to it, kind of like mushrooms, but if the mushrooms did a lot more during their work day, you know, like it's busier than just having like a mushroom quesadilla. And the salsa here, the green salsa here is like, it's like tomatillo and oniony, and there's probably like some serrano chili in there. I don't know, cause it's spicy and it's delicious. Definitely doesn't taste like when you expect what a quesadilla to taste like. I think in America, especially, we think a lot about cheese and that it should be really cheesy. There's no cheese in this. It's kind of crazy that I'm sitting here in Mexico eating this. I feel like I'm in my living room, but then like, obviously I'm not in my living room. <laughs> ah. <laughs> this is what happens when you're live in the streets. Si pase. No gracias. <laughs> And I think that if you know what to look for, you can have really, really beautiful food. And wheat lacoche is probably one of those ingredients that unless you know about it, you're not gonna find it or ask for it. And this is definitely something that you should be asking for. So since I'm here in Mexico City for a couple more days, I asked you guys what I should try. Like who knows the city better than the people who live it, obviously. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna try some things based on your recommendations. Hi everyone, my name is Emma and I'm currently in Wales, but I'm originally from Mexico City. Since you're in Mexico City, the snack I think you should try is churros. You can typically find churros everywhere. Churros are made from a fried shoe pastry covered in sugar and sometimes cinnamon. They can sometimes be stuffed with different fillings too. My favorite is cajeta, which is a caramel made from goat's milk. I adore churros simply because they are sweet and comforting. Like my mum, if I was with her after she finished work, we would cross the street to get churros and hot chocolates. And I remember them being warm, comforting, rich and very sweet. I hope you enjoy. Ready? Okay. Um, this is the caramel one. This has condensed milk. Plain. But like obviously churros taste really good. But I don't think I've ever had one with caramel. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> it's so decadent. Ten out of ten. I want the condensed milk one now though. It's a little naughty. The caramel. It's a winner. So good. Thank you for the recommendation. <laughs> what do you think? Oh. No. <laughs> Hello, Beryl. My name is Esther. I'm from Mexico City. Well, the snack that you should try, I believe it would be cucumbers with salt, chili, lime, and chamoy. Oh, you can get cucumbers almost from any fruit street vendor. It tastes fresh. The lime gives a sour flavor and there's a little bit of kick of spice with the chili. And the chamoy is kind of sweet. I've always loved cucumbers. It brings me back very good memories. I think that it's a good combination and I think that you'll enjoy it. Okay, trying the cucumbers with chamoy, tahine, salt and lime and it smells really good. Don't mind my microphone, I'm learning how to do street stuff. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Fresh, kind of sweet, kind of spicy, lemony. I probably would have never thought to order cucumbers because they have all this really nice fruit as well, but it's really hot in Mexico City today and it feels like super refreshing. And it's just like a big thing of cucumber, so you can kind of like munch on it for a while. My sister's gonna try it, hold on. Delicious. 
so good. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Hey, my name is Heidi Flores and I was born and raised here in Mexico City. The snack you should definitely try now that you're here would be Pelón Pelo Rico. This is one of the top candies in Mexico. It's um, a paste made out of tamarind and of course it's mixed with a bit of chili powder. Just put the cap off and then you squeeze it from the bottom part. So what it does, you're gonna see it, the, the pulp will come out. Another very popular candy, it's more a traditional one. This is called palanqueta. You can find it in street stalls, street vendors have them. And this is super hard since it's cold caramel. I would only have a half top or a quarter because it's super, super sweet for me. And of course, another very fun and easy to have Mexican candy would be the cazuelita, which as you can see, it's like very rustic. And last but not least, this would be another one. This is called elote, as in corn. Elote is corn here, so it has a layer of uh, spice. These are very common to have them in the piñatas, so that's why most of them remind me of my childhood. Okay, I'm back from Mexico. I have my candies to do the final taste test. Here we go. I think I'm gonna start with this one. <laughs> oh, this is just tamarind. I think it is so interesting how different candies are around the world. To just have a tamarind candy, if you've never had tamarind, it is a sweet kind of like bean pod looking thing. Super common in India, which is how I was introduced to it. The flavor is sweet, but not overly sweet. This one feels like it may have been sweetened a little bit. It's pretty good. I think that this one is also tamarind. Ooh, this one's a lot softer. It might be because my apartment is warm. This one's a lot stronger. The crazy corn. This guy's got some pretty fun sunglasses on. I really enjoyed finding these candies. It was like going on a scavenger hunt around the city. <laughs> this looks like a lot. Oh my God. Oh, that is strong. It is sour. Well, I wanna know what's underneath all of the tamarind and chili. No. Oh my god. I think that if I was a child, this would not be my type of candy. Okay, the final one is the brittle. Mmm. Caramelly, peanutty, sesame seeds. I don't know, this one's really good. Ooh, it is very sweet though. But I really like it. This really reminds me of sweets that you get in Turkey and in the Middle East. Honestly, this one's good. My two favorites are these. If you're interested in trying Wheat La Coche, you can buy it canned, at least here in America. I'm leaving a link in the description to some places where you can buy it. It's honestly an incredible ingredient, definitely worth trying. I wanna thank everybody who helped me make this video. It was a little awkward for me not being in my living room. I've never really been on camera before outside of this very safe space of mine. So I appreciate you guys bearing with me in my awkward attempt to <laughs> translate this in the field a little bit more. I'm gonna practice, I will get better, I promise. <laughs> anyway, I will see you all in my next video. I'm actually gonna take this one.